I'll do a couple of the sort of easier technical ones first. Um, all the commas after the word and at the end of each whereas is gone. Um, a couple of the semicolons in the middle of the whereas is changed to commas. The whereas is unbolded. The last proclamation we did, they were unbolded. Um, I'm not sure we've got a standard thing for that yet. Um, but I'll, I'll deal with the bigger changes. The one, two, three, four, the, the fourth whereas had two sentences in it. Yep. So I split it up into a fourth and a fifth whereas, whereas the fourth whereas would be just the first sentence. Um, Dr. King believed that service was the soul's highest purpose and was the path to happiness and greatness. Um, I guess that means a comma and, or semicolon and will need to be added, whereas, and then Dr. King once said. The, the end of the quotation I changed to a question mark, single quote, comma, double quote, with the leading adding to that sentence um, to make it one sentence instead of two in that whereas. And then it's the last whereas um, that has a lot of changes and then the now therefore clause that does. Um, and the last whereas is, I moved a lot of what was originally there into the now therefore, I think. Um, Mm -hmm. because it seemed more like a now therefore than a whereas to me. Yes. Um, and I created a more Amherst local whereas that reads whereas the residents of the town, well, I might have missed some stuff, yeah, of, of the town, the of, town of Amherst, um, through the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Committee of Amherst, Inc., have been observing this holiday as a come at a commemorative breakfast for over 35 years in order to reflect on Dr. King's legacy and recognize area high school students and adult community members who continue to work towards the dreams, ideals, and service for which he stood. I took most of that language directly from the invitation to mm -hmm. the community breakfast that we received and the name mm -hmm. of the committee from that invitation. Um, 35 years is yesterday, is last year, today's 36th, so I, we could count back and maybe put since a certain year if we'd rather do that, which would allow it to be less changeable year over year. Um, and then the now therefore, I attempted to make it one now therefore with one sentence. And so it's got a lot of changes to it. Now therefore, we the town Council, the Amherst Town Council proclaimed January 15, 2020 as Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day, uh, comma, I, I gotta figure out mine, mm -hmm. invite the residents of Amherst to join us in a bell ringing ceremony and reading of the proclamation on the steps of Town Hall at 4.30 p.m. and encourage residents of Amherst to attend the 36th annual Martin Luther King Jr. commemorative breakfast at the Amherst Regional Middle School cafeteria at 8.30 a.m. on Saturday, January 18th, 2020. I realize now that adding the January 18th, the 4.30 p.m. for town hall reading should probably also say on January 15th, just to be clear. And I tried to put them in the correct time order. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I would guess I would add at 4.30 p.m. on January 15th, 2020. Okay. Okay. comma, okay. and encourage residents. Good. Thoughts, suggestions, things we've missed, problems, anyone? Take a moment. I was just going to say, I think it's possible for me to project this if we get that set, right, Athena? If that would be helpful to everyone. I'm okay with what I have in front of me. Does anyone else need it projected? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I guess yeah. we're we don't. okay. <laughs> uh, if we had public present, I'm not sure if I need to put it on. And I think it's been some time. I don't want to talk over people's reading, but. Um, 
since the council actually, or the uh, select board, I guess, in the previous um, time, has actually done this. So I think it's nice that it's being done, but perhaps not. Mandy, do you have the small changes that you've caught? I do. Okay. If no one has any other changes or um, observations, um, I'm ready to entertain a motion. So I'll move to declare the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. proclamation as Oop, there's one more change. That's, the know. word proclamation in the title needs an A. Oh. Um, and <laughs> declare the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. proclamation mm -hmm. as amended clear at the GOL meeting on Jeff, December 18th, 2019, right. clear, consistent, and actionable. Is there a second? Second. Evan seconds. I see no reason for more discussion, so I'm going to call an immediate vote. All those in favor of the motion as stated, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 I see uh, anyone opposed? No. So I see four in favor, uh, none opposed, and one uh, counselor absent. Okay. It occurs to me, this is work for the chair, that it would be useful for this body to have actually a list of um, regularly recurring proclamations, of which I assume this would be one, Puerto Rican Day, I think there are a host of them, mm -hmm. um, human rights uh, and so on. So I'm going to make a note to the chair um, to begin assembling those and also the dates. I think that would be useful for this committee in the future, right, so that we would have a um, a list. We would know ahead of time what's supposed to be. I mean, things that are recurring every year. Um, and hence, maybe we could also be helpful uh, in reminding people of that so that we don't get things thrown at us at the last minute. So I'm going to suggest making a list of recurring. Okay? The second item on our agenda is, um, again, out of order. It's um, the issue of. Um, I'm not sure we really want to take it up now, but the issue, issue of president and vice president, um, this came up at the council meeting and um, it seemed to uh, delay uh, the uh, vote for uh, the offices of president and vice president, at least for a longer term. The, the council, or at least some members of the council, seemed to want to have a discussion. Uh, it wasn't clear to me completely, but hopefully some of you can enlighten me as to what the nature of that discussion would be. Um, it also seemed that it might be something that we should um, talk about a little bit um, for, for a few minutes. But that was also something that came under items unanticipated since it came up at the uh, recent council meeting. Um, so what I have here in the packet, I believe is in the, should be in the packet, is uh, the ROP that relates to the powers and duties of the president and vice president. And um, I guess, uh, and this is up to the committee, uh, is there anything we can add to this discussion? Uh, I would like someone to help me understand what the nature of this discussion, um, and maybe no one knows. Um, any thoughts on this? So this is in your packet. Um, it's also in the ROP, complete document. 2.2, powers and duties of the president and vice president. Is this what we would have as the focus of a discussion? Or is, the, uh, is this another issue entirely that I'm missing? And if we don't want to talk about this, we can simply say we didn't have anything to say. Move on. 
Sorry, no one has to send me now. It's just, uh, it seemed that at the council meeting, there seemed to be some sense that this is something that GOL could take up. Um, but I have to confess that it wasn't clear to me what it was that I was supposed to take up. Um, and so uh, maybe I misunderstood. Maybe there's nothing we really have to say. It's uh, nothing we can contribute as a committee to this discussion other than point uh, to the I think it's, document. it's probably premature because okay. there were clearly at least two members of the council who have some opinion on how the president and or vice president have been operating. Mm -hmm. okay. But then we were told, but well, we don't want to have this discussion tonight. So without knowing what their concerns thoughts, were. concerns are, mm -hmm. I don't know that we could weigh in. Because um, otherwise we're just looking at the rules and going, is there anything we need to add or subtract? But without knowing mm -hmm. the reason or the concerns, there's nothing that we can really I don't, yeah, okay. you know, other, uh, the only thing we can do is talk about our personal, personal opinions exactly. of right. how the vice president has, and seems, yeah. has the end, I don't know. All right, I so. agree. That's really not appropriate, I think. Is there any other uh, document that I should be aware of that governs this besides the rules of procedure? I mean, there's a, one mentioned briefly in the charter. The charter. Right, but it, it doesn't have much more to say, right? I mean, it's, so, okay. Those are the two documents that um, define these two offices. Okay. All right. Then I'm willing to just let that go. All right. Um, working through this thing. I'm sorry? So we're working through this thing. Oh, yeah, we're going to work through it. No, tr <laughs> don't, don't you worry. Um, eight. Eight. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're already at eight. That's the agenda. Right, 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 right. right, right. Um, okay. Item number... Uh, Four is, in fact, Rule 10.5H. Um, this came to us again at the result of the recent council uh, meeting, so it really falls under uh, item number eight. Items not anticipated, um, but I uh, was uh, put it on the agenda. Um, and so, um, actually, I see it is on the agenda. So, it's so number two. Right, it's number, number two. two. Right. <laughs> My apologies. So, anyway, Rule 10.5H which is coming to us uh, courtesy of OCA. And so um, you should have in your packet a, um, the proposal, which is basically changing one word uh, under 10.5H. But we also had some committee discussion of that. So um, does the chair of OCA want to uh, take the lead on this? Um, and we can talk a little bit about what we think can or cannot be done in terms of so I think, uh, so obviously, I don't think I need to go back through the rationale about why I think we need a revision to this rule. Um, so i focus instead on what this should look like. Um, so what OCA is proposing um, is just throwing the word regular in front of committee um, to specify that our normal, regularly scheduled uh, council committee meetings need to have public comment. But if you schedule something as a special meeting, um, then you are not obligated to have public comment. Um, there seemed to be some concern from the council that perhaps that was a little too broad, mm -hmm. um, that uh, that could allow a committee to say, this is a special meeting, and so no public comment. Um, I, I, don't, I don't personally share that concern, um, but there was some uh, idea put forth about exempting specifically interviews. Um, and that was something that was discussed in OCA um, very briefly, and that was something that uh, was also the topic of a conversation between myself and the vice chair of OCA. Um, and what we opted to do in the end, so we, we did consider that. I want to put, put it out there that that wasn't an idea that was novel um, on Monday night. That was something that we had discussed. Um, and the reason we decided not to do that um, was, one, just for simplicity's sake, uh, two, because this is parallels the language of the charter, and we felt like that that type of parallelism would be useful. Um, but three, because in theory, there might be uh, not yet thought of uh, other types of meetings where we wouldn't want public comment. Um, and so exempting just interviews 
well, if CRC decides that they're gonna have like a work session where they're just gonna hammer out something and they're not gonna vote and they don't feel like they need public comment, um, you know, maybe they should be allowed to have a special meeting as long as in their regular meetings when they actually take that item up, they're, um, they're accepting public comment. And so I guess the thought was instead of keeping it incredibly narrow, just parallel the charter and allow, allow committees some flexibility here um, so that we're not overly prescriptive and so that we don't have to continuously revise this rule every time um, something new pops up. Steve. Yeah, so I'm, I assume that the difference between a special meeting and a regular meeting, so we've determined our, our meeting schedule for 2020 already. So those are the regular meetings. So any meeting, in my opinion, <laughs> in my opinion, a special meeting is any meeting that's not one of those meetings. So that's off schedule for any reason, a snowstorm, something added to the agenda, you know, emergency, whatever. So I think that, I mean, I think that there, so according to the charter, regular meetings of the town council shall be held at a time and place fixed by measure, but once per month. So we fix those by measure because we all voted. No, yay. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm good with the proposal because I, I do think it has, you know, allows for this discretion. Little, uh, just a little story. I just saw a friend of mine who was just, appoint, just appointed to the Provincetown Planning Board. Mm -hmm. So I asked him about the process that he, he just moved to Provincetown. Now he's on the planning board. Um, mm -hmm. So in Provincetown, select board, it's basically a select board vote. So I asked him how he got, how that worked. He said he saw in the newspaper that someone was being interviewed. He thought he could do a better job, so he put his name in the hat. He was interviewed, and they, they chose him. So I looked at the Provincetown select, I was just really curious. Mm -hmm. So this pro Provincetown, they have special meetings, which is where they do these interviews, and then immediately followed by regular meetings. So, so what you're describing, I think, is a process that is sort of adopted by other communities, that you can have a special meeting concurrently or, or on the same day as a regular meeting, but for the sp specific purpose of something like, like an interview. So Mandy. the only thing I, I, I agree with all of that, I think we're gonna parallel the council charter, that makes sense for committees of the council. Um, I would just point to, for the purposes of if you're writing a memo on this and our recommendation, 10.5 C and D, where C says committees shall meet regularly at such times and places as they may prescribe. I think that goes exactly to what Steve was saying is every committee has set a regular meeting schedule. Yeah. Those are the regular meetings. Um, and D, special meetings may be held if called by a committee's chair or at the request of one third of committee members, but not fewer than two. Mm -hmm. That kind of defines what a special meeting mm -hmm. is, yes. um, as opposed to a regular meeting, which is the times we've prescribed. You know, mm -hmm. that, that goes to the schedule to me. And so I'm not as concerned with this concern about, well, then every meeting the chair calls will be a special meeting and won't have public comment. I think leaving the special meetings open to not having it, but allowing them to have it, this doesn't prohibit them from having it, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. it, is just what we've mm -hmm. been doing on the mm -hmm. council. Yeah. And, makes sense to have our committees follow the same rule, essentially. Mm -hmm. Evan? Yeah, and what I think is important to note is that we've had a number of special town council meetings, um, and with the exception of one, which had a fairly tight time constraint, there's been public comment allowed at, at those, and mm -hmm. so there seemed to be some, some fear that this would prohibit or discourage public comment at special meetings, but I, I think that um, largely speaking, most special meetings would likely still have public comment unless the chair or the committee has some real rationale to disallow it, which I, so, so I, I, I think that um, we don't have to be overly concerned with, uh, this isn't gonna lead to some type of crush down on, crack down on, no. okay. on public comment. Just a question that I have. Um, if a chair, say, I decide at a special, I mean, 
what power does the chair have to, to decide whether there can or cannot be public comment? This says clearly that regular, if we have this change, a regular committee meeting must have or shall have a period of public comment. Um, so at, at some other kind of meeting, the chair can simply say, I don't want public comment. What is that? Is that written somewhere? Is that something that I should know about? Um, what gives the chair the authority to um, say there cannot be public comment at this meeting? Is there an answer to that question? Or is it obvious I'm just missing it? No? By, by setting the agenda without public comment, the just, chair has right. the right to set the agenda, so and as long as it complies with the rules, so if the right. chair deems it a special meeting, if we would change this rule if the chair deems it a special meeting and decides not to put public comment on that agenda. Right. It's the setting of the agenda. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Well, um, what I'm hearing is that um, we are, as a group, by consensus, happy with the way this change is simply inserting the word regular under in H and um, saying that we are essentially paralleling the charter in this. Um, and I'll get some clarity on that, but that's all right. And uh, of site 5C uh, and 5D, 10.5C and 10.5D, um, to make the point that it's already clearly stated what a special meeting is um, in the uh, rules, and um, this is not going to in any way um, hinder or prevent um, regular com uh, public comment, even at those meetings, um, but it does allow um, OCA uh, the uh, power or ability to prevent it at a meeting where it is not a regular meeting and their interview is taking place. Is that anyone? Yes, Mandy, anything I, you'd I like just, to add to that? Do we want, does the chair of OCA want to vote from GOL on this? Would that be helpful for the next meeting, a vote to recommend yes. this change from Nothing GOL? Yeah. My preference. Yes. yes, I think that would be appropriate, I agree. Um, so so I'll, I'll, right. I'll move to recommend the council add the word regular to the beginning of rule 10.5 h is there a second so councillor roth seconds um, any further discussion then i'm going to proceed to vote on this motion all those in favor of this motion please signify by raising your hand and saying aye aye I see and any nays, no. So um, I see uh, four uh, affirmative, uh, no uh, negative, and one counselor absent. Okay. Yes, Evan. So OCA is, is requesting two rule changes, which you'll notice in the report. This was the more pressing one, which is why it, it, it sort of being um, the process was expedited a little bit in front of this body, but just to put on GOL's radar, because I don't remember um, if I said it yet, Rule 8.6, which is consideration of non-emergency measures prior to vote, um, which are about uh, the council's ability to act prior to consideration by a body. Um, under appointments, it says the council shall not vote to confirm any appointment made by the town manager until it has been considered by the Outreach Communications and Appointments Committee. Um, so just putting on the radar that there's also an interest in OCA of uh, striking the words made by the town manager to just say the council shall not vote to confirm any appointment until it has been considered. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not quite sure what, why in rules um, the town manager appointments were carved out, but town mm -hmm. council appointments weren't. Um, that one obviously isn't as pressing um, because it doesn't need to be done before interviews. Um, but just sort of putting on GOL's radar that that is another rule change that OCA will be seeking. Okay. So put that as a future agenda item. Consider rule 8.6 and a suggestion. Okay. So that request from OCA. All right. Uh, so now I want to move to what is actually item number three on the agenda. Um, which is to continue our discussion of town council committee reorganization. And this, I think, will take up a good portion of our time this morning. Um, we have in our packet two documents um, that you should be referring to. And um, since this has been a very hard and able work of Councilor Ross, I'm going to ask him to um, 
Let me first, let's just get a sense from all of you how you'd like to proceed. We have um, a rationale for this, which I spelled out very briefly in my memo to the town council, essentially just a set of kind of goals or what sort of driving uh, uh, reasons behind uh, the organization are. And I didn't, uh, if anyone has any concerns or would like to add to that list. Um, so there's a rationale that um, we have that would be in the report, um, why we're doing this, why we think it's, it's worth doing. Um, it's also part of our charge to review this um, anyway on an annual basis. Um, and then the second is the, the actual proposal. And since the proposal, at least at the moment, involves, um, in a sense, changes to all the standing council committees and the elimination of two of them, um, it seems to, that we should go to that unless there's any thoughts or concerns about the, uh, the rationale, which is in my uh, memo. And then the question becomes, what, how do we want to start? I, what I had was starting with finding, I was going to go committee by committee, um, and this is open to debate or change, but I was going to move committee by committee, and I was going to suggest, at least in my order, was finance, and then um, uh, governance, organization, legislation, GOL and OCA, uh, or GOL, the new GOL, and then um, community resources and um, to be named, right now it's named town services and outreach. Evan, since I'm asking you to sort of shepherd us through this document, is that an order you accept you'd like, or do you want to change that? That's fine. Okay, everyone else is okay with that. So we start with finance, which I'm hoping is the, the, the easiest of these, um, but um, you should have in front of you a sample chart sheet, um, a draft chart sheet for finance. Evan. Yeah, I think finance is going to be the easy one. I that our, the attempt of taking these committee by committee might fall apart when we get to the other since there's so much yes. shifting between them. But finance is pretty simple. Just, just to point out to you, there are two documents. Um, one is a clean copy, which you could open like in the packet. Uh, the other one has comments. And because it's comments in a Word document, um, that's probably the better one to be working with. But that one you would need to actually download to the computer to see the comments. Right. Um, so finance committee, this is pretty simple. Um, this is the existing finance charge merged with the existing audit charge. Um, and so basically everything that was in the audit charge has been worked into the appropriate parts of the finance committee charge. Um, I did split up in, in all of these underneath charge because a lot of these now have fairly lengthy bullet sections trying to group them thematically. And so I grouped budgets and appropriations together, and then investigations and annual audit together just to highlight those sections. Sure. The only thing that's my idea in here, that's like my thought, is in purpose. Um, I used to, it said the finance committee shall advise the town council on all financial matters, and I just specified town financial matters, um, which is a very small charge, but I think, again, sort of speaks to this, my desire to see finance focus a little more narrowly on um, the town's finances as mm -hmm. opposed to some broader questions that we've seen them take on about, say, the financial stability of other institutions. Um. Okay. Thoughts on this charge? Mandy. So easy but not. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The first bullet point is a combination of a number of different charter sections. And so I actually, I think, attempted to split it into four bullet points um, with adding review and make recommendations to the town council on or on measures regarding or measures authorizing all sorts of things, various ones, um, so that it's clearer that it's not all buried into the same thing and then reference the charter section. And Evan, I can send you my full document at, at the end so you can see what's going on. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I attempted to split it into four, but then my, I had a big question about the second part of that big first one, the capital inventory, capital improvement program, and infrastructure. Because our JCPC mm -hmm. charge is to make recommendations to the town manager on 
the capital inventory, capital improvement plan, all of that. I didn't actually fully look up JCPC's charge, but I know JCPC is charged in the charter with making recommendations to the town manager on, at a minimum, the five-year capital improvement program. So I don't know what to do with that group of three for finance, mm -hmm. um, because this one is sort of recommendations to the council on that, not recommendations to the town manager. JCPC is charged with towards the town manager per the charter, but it might be good for there to be included somewhere someone to talk to the council about that. Um, you know, I'd, so I don't know what to do with that section, but I thought I'd, I'd, I'm struggling with that, but the overlap concerns me um, that we might be in theory charging two different committees with this almost the same right thing. thing. Um, the when you split those up, then the third and fourth bullet points, the hold a public hearing on the budget proposed, and then the review any requests for new appropriations or supplemental budgets are almost overlapped with um, annual budgets, supplemental budgets, and other appropriations and financial transfers, that first one, in a way. Um, so, so, you know, and, and I think it's a legacy of this was one of the first charges ever written by this council. Um, so I think there can be some cleaning up that doesn't actually change mm -hmm. the duties, yeah. but makes it clearer and doesn't have a lot of overlap. Um, I like my adding review and make recommendations to the town council in front of all of these instead of just, I think one of them, I don't know whether it had it in there um, at all because I can only see my changes. So. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what I deleted initially from it. Um, on investigations and audit, my only recommendation is on the second bullet point. Oh, I had one recommendation on the last bullet point in finance, mm -hmm. budgets and appropriation, the one that says upon referral from the town council, review and hold hearings mm -hmm. on water, sewer, and other municipal utility rates. Yep. I wanted to add the phrase, if required by law after hearings because I'm not sure we're required to hold a hearing, I just don't know. And so I don't want the charge to put a requirement for a hearing in that might not actually be required. Um, and then in the investigations and audit, the second bullet point, adopt procedures for selections of an accountant. The actual charter language is that the town council adopts procedures. So I would delete the word adopt and write in make recommendations to the town council on procedures for selection of an accountant or firm, since the charter says the council is the adopting group. Do you have all of, do you have all I, yes, I do. I can, I'll just forward you my whole document as I go through it so you can do the compare. Just a question of information in that first bullet point under budgets and appropriations, the, the, the cap limit, uh, what was it, the phrase again that you were, what were concerned about? Is that currently in the charge of the Finance Committee? Those, those words? Yes. Uh, back to budgets and appro appropriations. First bullet point. Yeah, every, yeah. Every, it's just copied, correct? So this is yeah. language that is in the existing mm -hmm. uh, uh, charge. And so it's a question in general of cleaning up organization, et cetera. Yeah. I, I just thought it would be easier if we split it out into each charter section and, and identified whether it came from a charter or whether it came from our own okay. thing. That becomes two and then when points. we split it out, I actually had it become three. Three bullet points. So budgets, so. supplemental budgets, other appropriations of financial transfers as one, one. Yeah. capital inventory, capital improvement, and infrastructure as a second one. Yeah. Um, and then purchase, sale, lease of land. Oh, I made it four, I guess. Purchase, sale, leasing of land or buildings as a third one, and borrowing and debt as a fourth one. Okay. Um, okay. Just, I thought it read easier. That's okay. all. Yeah. Um, okay. And then for the first two, there was charter sections that could be actually cited and the second two there were not that okay. I could tell and that's a document that you would share with Evan I, I will send it right. off okay. to Evan okay all right all right it sounds though um, Steve I'm including you in this question obviously but it sounds like philosophically there's no objection to what we're proposing there is some uh, changes in terms of clarity and uh, maybe bring it more into 
make bring this charge more into conformity with what actually the, the committee is doing, um, which always is a service we could provide at any time. Um, so that's a, a plus. Um, and Mandy has changes that she has suggested, and Evan will get. Anything else that anyone wants to add to this charge or has concerns about with this charge? Evan, no? Um, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I have one more. Sorry. If it's in your document. <laughs> we'll I just sent the document off to Evan um, yes. that has all four charges in it. Staff support. The charter has the clerk of the council as coordinating the audit, the annual audit, as part of the charter language. So under staff support, I would add and clerk of the council in parentheses for audit coordination. Okay. It's in it. Okay, good. Um, something I need advice from all of you on is my thought was that as we work through this um, and we come to some consensus as to what we'd like the sample charges to look like, I would share them in advance with the relevant uh, chair of the committee for their input or thoughts, um, rather than just have it sprung upon them on January 6th. I mean, there will be a report in the packet, a memo from the council, or from the committee, that will describe the rationale and will include um, these documents. But I thought that with each of the committees that's being impacted, and particularly with finance, I'd like the chair to see it uh, even before that, as long as people are okay with that. Um, okay. Mandy? I'm fine with that. I keep paging down and seeing more. More chances. <laughs> as long as they're in the document. <laughs> they're in the document, but one needs discussion. Um, okay. The finance council members service on other town budget-related committees. Um, I know there has been some fr frustration on the council, particularly to JCPC and what this charge how it limits who can serve on JCPC mm -hmm. because it requires no more than two finance committee members to be able to be on JCPC. Mm -hmm. It does the same with budget coordinating, but then we call the committee of the whole for budget coordinating um, and all, and then it's got participatory budgeting. And so I, I'm thinking it might not be necessary. It would be a change for who can serve on JCPC and budget coordinating, but I wonder if we should delete it completely as a recommendation of maybe we don't need these strict strictures on which counselors can serve on a different committee in a yet another committee's charge. So where would these strictures then exist if they don't If exist we there? wanted them, we right. should put them in those specific charges in instead charges. of in this charge, I would say. So it would be in the participatory budgeting commission charge, it would be in the JCPC charge, and the BCG charge, is what you're saying. These should be moved. If we want them, they should if be If we want them, charges. yeah. And why do you think they're here? Why, they were put, why were they put here in the first place? I don't remember, Okay. but it seems odd to have it here versus. Well, I guess the idea would be that it, it alerts the members of this uh, committee as to um, what their possible, I mean, that they have uh, you know, put possible duties on other committees, right? So it's informative in that sense, right? If you're a member of the finance uh, council, it, right? Uh, you you want to know this, right? I mean, maybe, but it says no more than two. So in theory, finance can have zero, mm -hmm. and all of them can come from somewhere else. Or I, I don't know whether we even want to keep that restriction of no more than two, number one, but it seems a weird thing to put here than in the other charges themselves. Any thoughts? Yeah, I, I actually agree with it. So I, I personally, personal opinion, would like to keep that two restriction um, because I, I think it's, we want to make sure that the expertise of finance committee is represented on JCPC, but I like the idea that you bring in more of the council on something like capital, which is very important. So you have the expertise of finance committee, but then you also broaden participation. Otherwise, JCPC is just a subcommittee of finance, um, l literally, because three members of finance would be on 
JCPC, the Aquarium of Finance on JCPC. Um, but I think, but I agree with you that that it, it makes more sense as a restriction in JCPCs and BCGs charge than it does here. Um, than it does here, and it's currently not in that. We we revised that charge at some point. I don't remember what happened. Yeah. So, but but I don't want. I personally don't want to lose that. So, if we are recommending deletion from that, I, I would like it to be paired with the recommended revision to JCPC. I'm okay, and we can have that discussion then. I I just think it's weird here. So, for the moment, we're going to leave it in terms of the. Or no, you want to take it out? You want to leave it? Delete it and add it into JCPC and pair it with a revised JCPC charge. That would be my prayer. It, it's a section that exists on no other charge mm -hmm. anywhere else in the town. So if we were to delete it, it would require, and I assume I would do this, um, checking the charges of the other three committees and making sure that that language is in their charges. And if not, then we'd need a revision to those charges to insert it. Is that what you're saying? That's what you'd like? No, I know, but at, at this point, we're done. I don't think we have the time or energy to check it, but I can do that. I'm getting the sense that at least two of the members would I, like to take it out. I could check it and deal with it if you'd like me to, since I'm the one that requested no, deleting no, it. Okay. <laughs> um. But I'm getting a sense, at least from two, and I'm sort of, um, it can go either way. I don't know, Steve. Okay, so there's a sense, a consensus to remove this. Um, so Evan, you um, would remove it, I take it, from your final uh, product. And Mandy or I, or both of us, will see that this language um, is transferred to the relevant committees, and if not, then we're going to need a revision of those charges. Okay. Unless there's further discussion, I'd like to move on to, I'm sorry, Evan. I, d I don't remember if we ever actually did this, but I am looking at the revised JCPC charge that I think that we did, I think we voted to adopt as a committee, but it's never been adopted by the council but it does have a revised composition section that says three current town councilors, two of whom shall be on the finance committee, which I'm recognizing actually contradicts the finance committee language, which says no more than two. And this, so there is a revision in play, mm -hmm. but it, it also needs to be fixed. So there, we have something to work with, but okay. it's actually wrong. It's wrong, okay. Good. So I would like to spend, I'm sorry, Evan? So the Finance Committee is meeting today, right? Yeah. And this is a what? Yeah. Yesterday. Yeah. So, so finance won't be able to see this then before the January 6th meeting. Well, the, Any committee won't, right? Well, I was, again, I, my thought was that I would send any revisions we've made to the relevant chairs of the committees. So in this case, it would, uh, my suggestion was that I would send whatever uh, gets crafted by consensus today to the chair of finance to look at, if that's all right, um, but not to all the committee members. Um, the whole council would get a, um, a memo from GOL with these charges attached but they would not get that, I think, as soon as the chair has really get, get this. So that's what I have in mind. So um, we're being joined by uh, the council president, and um, we are just beginning, really, our discussion of uh, the uh, town council uh, committee um, restructuring. And we just worked our way through um, the sample charge, proposed charge for finance. And a number of uh, changes have been suggested by uh, Mandy Joe, And those are going to be sent on to Evan. And then a consensus or a composite document will be, sh be crafted um, with those changes included. The next uh, charge that we're looking at is uh, GOL, correct? And um, having Evan take us through it. So Evan, GOL. Yeah, so this one's a little more complicated. 
um, because if you look at the questions, I have several questions, or if you look at my comments, there are several questions in there. Um, and so this is where it's a little difficult to talk about just one in isolation. That's all right. Um, and that's because um, this also relates to a suggestion that I'm making about what happens to Oka. Right. Um, and so the idea being, and so let me, let me, let me talk about just briefly what I'm suggesting for Oka, because I think that'll inform. The idea is what would happen to Oka is essentially um, Oka would retain its outreach and communications aspect, but appointments would move over. And then what happens is Oka becomes much more about uh, sort of the day-to-day -day provision of services by the town. And so that's everything from, you know, public ways to um, any measure that might affect how uh, the town clerk might operate, such as a campaign finance measure, any measure that it might affect how one of the departments deliver services. Um, Can I, have a, I have a question for you, Evan. Yeah. Um, my initial understanding was that OCA was going to go out of existence and that we would create two, uh, CRC would be split into two. Yeah. So maybe what I'm hearing now is that you're calling, what you're calling OCA or the new OCA would be the result of um, taking some of the CR, is that? I, 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 I you have a TSO. You have yeah, a we're, 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 we're either, yeah, no, you're right. It's a, it's a recommend, this is, this is my attachment to OCA showing through, right? Um, it's, a dis, it's, a go, it's a dissolution, it's a dissolution, it's a dissolution of OCA and a new kill, committee as opposed to a, a dramatic revision of OCA. Um, and so the reason I think it, it, it's important to preface that is looking at the new GOL charge, or as perhaps Steve suggested, GOAL, an actual goal, which I, I like, is um, the appointments the, the uh, appointments move from what is now OCA to GOL. And of course, the rationale behind that being that if we're looking at sort of the organization of town government, we've already talked to some extent about committee charges, about reviewing committees. Um, it seems like appointments to town committees logically fall within GOL. If we're looking at town um, town council, how the town council structures its organizations, what it actually does, its governance of the town, appointment to multiple member bodies like uh, planning board and ZBA, it seems like it, it logically fits in this committee. Uh, the premise for putting appointments with OCA had always been that outreach and communications has influence on recruitment which relates to appointments, but a year in, we have never seen OCA do anything with recruitment, any type of outreach that has to do with recruitment, and in fact, that's been done completely by the CPOs, and the OCA subcommittee on outreach in their last meeting um, made a decision that they did not see recruitment as part of the outreach charge because that is sufficiently covered by the CPOs, and so if you, if you take that then it doesn't make sense to put appointments in OCA anymore because it doesn't actually relate to the outreach and it makes more sense in GOL. I also move, mm -hmm. moved a few other things over, but now I have some questions about whether that makes sense because if, if the new committee, TSO or wherever it becomes, right. has to do sort of with the day-to-day -day operations of government, then perhaps coordinate the annual review process of the town manager and because it has to do with provision of services by the departments, appointments by the town manager um, for department heads, those might actually logically fall within TSO. And so I think this is much more complicated because essentially what I did is I took everything out of OCA except the outreach stuff and put it in this revised GOL. I think appointments to town committees make sense in GOL. I think appointments by the town council make sense in GOL. Mm -hmm. But the two I'm uncertain on are the review process of the town manager and appointments to department heads, because maybe those actually more logically belong in the new committee, since they really have to do with sort of the operation of the, the town government as a whole. And so this is where these things get tricky, right, right. and there's no, there's no you know, clean way to delineate these. Mm -hmm. um, so those are where my questions come from. Mandy. So I, I would advocate for, even though the document I just sent, Evan doesn't have this added in, appointments as part of the name, and that clears up a lot of your questions is does it fall under governance or organization part, you just add an appointment section into the charge format and throw them in. Um, and then GOAL works too. Um, <laughs> 
My, yeah. uh, I've got a number of suggestions and concerns, um, some of which is not just of moving appointments over. Most of it's not necessarily concerns. You've tracked the language. It's just I have concerns about the language. Um, the governance section dropped, the first bullet point dropped at our current GOL charge has advised the town council on matters of internal council rules, governance, and organization, and you dropped the governance and organization section from what I could tell. I don't know whether you intended to or intended to and then put it into both then organization and as you reorganize this, you intended to just essentially repeat that item three times, under one in under each section with the correct one. Um, so I would just add governance and organization into the first bullet point again. Well, what about the third bullet point? I'm sorry, advise the town council on matters of town governance and organization. Well, that's town governments, not sorry. town council okay. right. rules, My governance problem. and organization. Okay. Um, so you'd like to put it back in? So I would put, I, I think it might have just been a cut and paste. What? That one's in my document, yeah. Um, I think it was just a cut and paste, okay. didn't quite get the whole copy. Okay. Um, All right. So on appointments, um, I have a lot of recommendations or yeah, requests. Take us through it one um, by one. The, it is, right now it's worded as make recommendations to the town council regarding all appointments by the town council and then references section 2.9. Mm -hmm. I would like to split that up to be really clear. So I would change that sentence to make recommendations to the town council regarding appointments by the town council to the planning board and zoning board of appeals and reference specifically 2.9C. I would add a bullet point that says make recommendations to the town council regarding the appointment of non-voting finance committee members and reference section 5.9. Mm -hmm. I would change the, um, I guess I would change it in both, but it's only listed in one. Instead of review and advise, it, it could be review and make recommendations to the town council on all appointments filed by the town manager for employment as department heads, and then same with multiple member bodies. Um, I, I'm okay with move, I, I think Evan made a very good point on should department heads go to the other one. Um, my only concern is we would be splitting that up, and is it wise to yeah. split that, just split that one out? You might get pushback from finance that says, well, then you should point, push, you know, you should move the finance recommendations on finance committee members to finance instead of to appointments. Um, it makes some sense, though, that the person that deals with town, the committee that deals with town services reviews the town department head filings. Um, in terms of other ones, I would add a bullet point, maybe under organization is where I put it, make recommendations to the town council regarding non-voting liaisons, which is 2.9D. Um, they will have potentially appointments that the town council makes, but it's also on which committees. So that's why I left it general and not just on appointments mm -hmm. um, and threw it under organization. Make recommendations to the town council regarding non-voting liaisons. Again, these are all in your These document. are all in my document so far. Um, then under governance, and I don't know whether this is the right spot for it, there, this is where I'm clearing stuff up from the recommendations to town council regarding all appointments by the town council, section 2.9C is what the original language was. I would like to see a clearing up of, there's other town council appointments that I'm not sure should just automatically be in a committee. And so I drafted the language as only upon specific referral by the council, make recommendations regarding appointments by the town council of the clerk of the council, additional staff, the town manager, or the interim town manager. And then I cited the charter sections 2.9A, 2.9B, which is the clerk, additional staff, 3.1, which is the town manager, and 3.6, the interim town manager. They happen potentially so infrequently, and some of them are so major that it might not logically sit within a standing committee if we actually, as a council, have to appoint a new town manager. Um, so I, I want to clear, and, and maybe our recommendation as a committee will be, yes, it does sit in this committee, but I think an actual clarity of where do those recommendations fall? Do they fall on this committee automatically? 
the, whoever's dealing with appointments, do they not fall within the appointments committee? Do they fall only if the council decides to, or could the council create an ad hoc committee if we're dealing with it? Where do they fall? And to be clear about that, I'm not wedded to the language I have, but I would love to see some clarity about those specific appointments um, and where they stand. And then I had two other recommendations. I don't know whether they fall under legislation or not. Mm -hmm. um, the generic GOL may offer policy and other recommendations within its purview for town council discussion and consideration. That was added into CRC as a generic. It, it might be worth putting into all the charges generically. Um, and then the other one is, re and this is again wording I'm not sure works, but review and ma make recommendations to the town council on matters referred to the GOL regarding town council policies. What I'm thinking of at mm. this time, and I'm not sure the wording works for it is, we drafted the public ways policy. Like the actual policy, right. not just clarity, consistency, and action, we drafted the policy. Right. How do we get language into the GOL charge that actually gives us that authority? And I'm not sure this language works because it might be too broad. Um, review and make recommendations to the town council on matters referred to the GOL regarding town council policies. It's the regarding town council policies because, well, once you've got the policy, it should go somewhere else. It shouldn't go to GOL. But the policy itself, some of them might be appropriately drafted here. It might not. And, but I want to make sure things like when we drafted the public ways policy, if we're drafting policies or language on, I don't know, alcohol on the common, if they feel like that belongs in GOL, that, that we've got language in this charge that covers things like that. I just don't know how to word that. So that was a lot. No, no. Um, and so some of it clearly is in the <clears throat> your own document, mm -hmm. but some of it is really questions for us to right. ponder. And without, I think, something in writing in front of us, it's going to be difficult, um, at least for me, to, to say anything thoughtful or coherent. So I might be able to post my screen up there so that you can see it, if that would be helpful. Lots of other members of the committee. I, I'm worried about getting into the weeds, but maybe it's unavoidable. Yeah. I think I think so. I, I think I, I agree that it, it'd be. This is why I have a question. I agree that it's weird to put all appointments except department heads in this committee and then department heads in the other, which is which is why I put that as a question as opposed to a suggestion. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd love to hear what the two other members think about that. Mm -hmm. um, and then as far as. I understand what you're saying about recommendations regarding appointments to the town council. Um, I guess I, and we had talked about that before. I think you and I talked about that, uh, not in committee, but like yeah. person to person at some point. And I thought about that. And the reason I kept it vague for right now is just because I wasn't sure if there are other appointments by the town council that we hadn't anticipated. Like Oka never really thought about liaisons when we designed OCA, and then it was like, oh, these are town council appointments, these should go to OCA. And, I, and so I always prefer to draft a little bit broader than, than super prescriptive. Um, so for example, let's say that, uh, you know, Meg Gage steps down from participatory budgeting. That was a town council appointment so we would be in charge, the town council is in charge for filling that, but that doesn't fit into one of the categories in this. So I guess it's, it's about how, how, how specific do you want to get versus broad, which I, I think is sort of an in the weeds question, but yeah. I think is, is probably important to, to talk about. And then the one other thing I do want some feedback on is whether or not uh, review of the town manager falls in this committee. Well, that I do have thoughts on, but um, Steve, any, any particular thoughts you have so far on any of this? Um, uh, and that's, it's okay. I'm sorry? Conduct. Good, that's fine. Um, my personal preference has always been to get the annual review process of the town manager out of this mm -hmm. committee 
um, and into the hands of an ad hoc committee or into the hands of the president calling some kind of ad hoc committee um, uh, for a number of reasons. Um, one, I think it's a, an appointment that really it, it intersects so many different, um, every member of the council is involved. Um, I don't think we bring any particular expertise here. And I think we have more than enough to do, not that the president and, uh, doesn't have more than enough to do, but um, I would, my personal feeling would to have, have this out and uh, leave it to some ad hoc process um, every year that the president would convene and appoint um, X number of members and it would be their job to coordinate and, and pretty much do what happened this year. Um, I, I just shudder at the thought of this committee um, trying to organize and manage that process, um, but that's just me. So that's the one contribution I have. I'd love to see that out. Steve? Well, exactly to that point, I think the president has to be involved yes. in the evaluation of the town manager. So if, yeah. So I'd prefer to leave this with the president, and uh, but maybe yeah. that's too vague, but I, I'd like to have it out of our chart. But that's just me, and maybe it sounds like maybe Steve. Anyone, any thoughts on that? You can ponder. Um, th 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 this currently sits in OCA. Um, right. I, I think, in, in George, you can. I'd like it out of OCA. You can, yeah, you can speak to this about. Um, <laughs> Oka, in this past review of the town manager, yep. wasn't exactly sure what we should be doing, and I believe most of it was done by the president in some coordination with one other counselor who had some experience. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. so uh, it, I, mm -hmm. I have no issue taking out of any committee charge. I think there will be some pushback on the council, but I think that that's, right. we're gonna get pushback on a lot right. of this. A lot so. Of this right. so. I, ha I have no issue with that. And if we take it, okay. I think, I think that there's a broader conversation beyond that about we know we have to do this annual review process. If right. we take it out of any committee charge and it appears like nowhere in the rules, right, right, there's right. a lot of ambiguity. Right. And so that might be something that if we do take it out of every committee charge, it needs to be paired with a rule that says annually the town council president shall appoint an ad hoc committee to something like that. Yes. Right. I would personally favor something like that as opposed to having it reside in a particular council committee. Um, okay. Other thoughts about how to proceed here. Um, what we did with the first charge is that um, Evan would incorporate Mandy's suggestions, but we have here um, some that are more really not uh, concrete suggestions or changes, but more almost philosophical or um, more pondering, reflective type questions. And I have to confess that for many of them, I'm not sure I have a particularly, I don't have a particularly thought out view. Um, so I'm not much help. Um, Evan, go ahead. So um, I agreed, I think, with most of what Mandy just said, I, I, like I said, my, my, I have some concern about being overly specific with appointments and, and think I have some slight preference of just keeping it vague and saying any appointment by the town council resides in this committee, although I would be in favor of maybe carving out the town clerk and the town manager because I do think that that's especially, especially carving out the town manager. Mm -hmm. um, I like the idea of upon referral, we come up with policies. I think under this proposed structure, a lot of the policies that GOL has already drafted would probably likely sit elsewhere, um, probably in, in the proposed TSO. Um, but I think that there's always the opportunity that there might be a town council policy that comes to us. The, the one thing I would maybe push back a little bit on is you said something about how in the CRC charge it says that they can craft policy and make recommendations within the purview of their charge, which if you'll notice actually in my suggested revision, I took out of the CRC. Oh, no, wait, I didn't. No, you just didn't put it in the TSO charge. I just didn't put it in the TSO charge. Yeah. I actually, I, to me, the statement that a committee may offer policy and other recommendations within its purview is like 
obvious. Like I don't, I don't know that that charge. needs to be in a charge. So I actually would take it out of. I thought I actually I took out a lot of stuff in the CRC charge, and I actually thought I took it out of the CRC charge, but now I'm seeing that I didn't, because it's sort of like, well, yeah, obviously they can offer policy within the purview of mm -hmm. their mm -hmm. charge. So mm -hmm. I, I think it either goes in all of them or it goes in none of them. Right. My preference would be the latter. And I propose putting it in all, but I'm, I'm not, <laughs> oh, I'm not wedded, like I'm not wedded to it. I just, it just seemed weird that one would have it and others would not. Um, so yeah, I think it should be an all or nothing. Okay. I am just, my computer is not finding Amherst Town Room, so, <laughs> so I don't know. It found the Samsung TV, I think, upstairs. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh, I don't know whether I have that. Yeah. Just a quick question for Lynn. You, you are, do you have access to these? You can see these, these charges? Yeah, I have to that. You, you do? I can. Because I have hard copies. Yeah, I can give you hard copies. I can give you hard copies. Thank you. All right. Okay. They have a few notes on them, so don't throw it away. But. Um, let me see, fine. Those are, uh, they're in order. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see if I can download it. But I need to look at it now. I believe finance is in there as well, then, I hope. Um, just briefly, the, the rationale for um, putting OCA to rest. Um, Perhaps the answer is it, it's rooted in the restructuring. There's, there's no, um, I mean, one obvious rationale is that, that it's nice to um, streamline our committee structure. It would allow, um, it's going to have some positive benefits. Um, and the various duties of OCA are being redistributed in, in various places. Um, no, I think I'm, trouble, I'm trying to find it. <laughs> um, I didn't mean to keep it from you, but I've got more pieces of pots right here. Yeah. Yes, that, and that is on this, right. Um, and before I think you came, Lynn, what I had agreed and the, the committee had agreed that um, when we do produce a kind of consensus uh, draft for each of these charges, we would send it, I would send it to the relevant chairs, not to the entire committee, but to the relevant chairs um, as soon as I can. Um, understanding it's the holidays and people may not get a chance to look at them, but um, I try to get it to the relevant chairs, um, uh, three of whom are sitting right here, so that, that's pretty <laughs> easy. Um, but Andy, as I guess basically speaking of Andy, he would get a copy of this, um, but it would be revised. So what you see there would have some slight changes to it. Uh, and you would get a copy. So I, again, I assume that's acceptable to everyone. Um, so I just want to say, I sent it to Lynn. I do not have the Solstice app, and I can't download it without okay. IT permission. OK. So, so, so what are we done with? Uh, that's what I'm going to ask. Are, are we done with uh, GOL? And are we agreed with the name? I mean, this is not the most important <laughs> thing, but um, I think GOL is fine as it stands. Um, I would add the A in, just to be clear. So it would be go a governance organization, legislation, and appointments committee. Organization, appointments, and legislation. So, so it's a word. Literally goal. <laughs> so it's literally the, goal. The goal <laughs> committee? You got the acronym goal, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is like one of those word games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because, because it, it, it's just switch the O and the A, and you have the Celtic like word for jail. Now. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> Which it does. I, one of the concerns, actually, one of the concerns I do have that I probably should mention before we move on, is that um, this is going to create an enormous workload for this committee. Um, I mean, I'm just thinking about right now as it stands. Um, we have bylaws we're looking at, um, and uh, we're looking at public ways, um, and now we're going to be also dealing with appointments. And if the appointments uh, process uh, goes through as planned, um, that's going to could become conceivably quite time-consuming 
at least for someone on that committee. Um, so just in the back of your minds, a uh, little concern about the workload for this committee, but maybe that's just me. Um, Evan. Yeah, and that, that, was, that was my concern is I feel like GO, GOL has had its, its a, a pretty heavy workload and do we want to add to this? Um, I think that in theory, if the OCA process that was just adopted for town council appointed committees works mm -hmm. and, and the new GOAL says, well, we'll just continue with that, um, that's really almost an annual thing, right, would, except for vacancies. Right. And um, we certainly OCA had just a flood of town no, there was town committee appointments. But we act o OCA hasn't dealt with a town committee appointment since like early October. They, there are a couple coming, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but I think that the, mm. the the addition of appointments actually was dramatic in the first year. It almost made sense for OCA to just be the appointments committee to hash that all out. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think that it's going to be um, a huge more amount of work. The other side of the coin is that, you know, we, as Mandy Joe said, we did draft the public ways policy. We did draft the uh, policy for candidate statements on the website. Honestly, I think under this proposed revision, both of those would go to the TSO. And so I think that there are other things that now just get sent to GOL because there's nowhere else yeah. that in theory and ideally would go somewhere else now. Okay. So might there might be balancing, yeah, okay. but, it, but I do also think that is an argument to remove annual review of the town manager. <laughs> As much as I agree that this year has been particularly tough with appointments, you will always have um, reappointments and appointments um, for terms every year because of the expiration of terms. It is the one question that, and you're raising it, Evan, and that is the extent to which this could be um, more than, it, it could break the balance that you're trying to achieve in shuffling things around committees because the appointments process, regardless of what this year's looked like, is going to continue. And I just um, am concerned that it could end up being more um, burdensome to whatever committee yeah. it's on. Yeah. And the question is whether or not added to GOL, it tips the balance so the GOL now becomes kind of a workhorse that y is not what you're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. Mandy? So um, I'm a little less concerned. Um, GOL spent this year fairly busy, but we handled some of the stuff. We're getting better at handling reviews of resolutions. They'll get easier as things go on. Oh. Rules are slowing down because we're entering a period where we'll sit with them for a while. And we've noticed a number of ones that were, you know, that'll be an annual process that can be done in November. You know, I don't think we'll see as much of it taking up five, six months that we've been dealing with it ourselves since they were adopted back in June. We've been dealing with that, I think that'll slow down a little bit um, and be a little bit more discreet during the year. Appointments, while there will be a lot of, uh, you know, reviewing for, you know, approval, that a lot of that will happen over the summer. So I think there will be different times of year if we do this that one thing is more heard at GOL than other things, but um, given the limited scope of bylaw reviews at GOL, you know, it's still clarity, consistency, and actionability given that limited scope. Um, I, I do think it's handleable. Your even appointments with appointments. In. I mean, there's, oh, throughout the year, there's always an appointment here or there, but the bulk 
large workload on appointments will happen as they expire in June, on June 30 and come to the council shortly thereafter. There will always be potentially a planning board or a ZBA or a department head or the vacancy appointments. They're gonna be one-offs throughout the year in, in what I've been seeing. I, I'm hoping that the, that's not the case. I'm hoping that most of your appointments will come to you in the spring so that when a per term expires at the end of June, it's already known who will be taking the person's place. Um, what you may be setting up, and I think it's a good idea, Amanda Jo, is a calendar, a kind of a rhythm to when you do various things, like appointments tend to be more spring, um, considerations of rules of procedure tend to be more, you know, once in the fall or something like that. Um, and maybe that's the key to um, having this work. The other thing is that I do um, actually hope that, and this is the first time I'm looking at these in, with specificity, that you get back to that issue about what is really GOL's charge with regard to, quote, clear, consistent, and actionable, and whether or not it's ready to, you're ready to raise again the issue of going beyond that. that was, so, so one just thing I want to say, you know, having done almost a, a year on OCA, is that, and I think George, I think you would agree with me on this, is that um, a lot of the time that has been consumed on appointments, including town manager appointments, has been figuring out what we're even looking for. Um, and I think that OCA is at a point now where we sort of can look at an appointment, raise whatever questions, and then deal with them pretty quickly. So the last time we dealt with appointments, we had an hour discussion and we got through six sets of appointments that only took that long because there was one committee where there was sort of a mess around um, and some confusion around appointments. But I think that having done all of that work, even though we'll always be getting appointments, it's, it, it doesn't take as long. And it, the reality is, assuming the OCA process that was adopted gets carried over, it works in this time, um, you know, the last eight OCA meetings were pretty much exclusively devoted to coming up with that process um, with some town manager things spotted in there. If we didn't have that in front of us, um, you know, we would have had a lot more time. So I think that, uh, you know, I, I'm not as worried about appointments because OCA has done the work in figuring out what does it mean to review the town manager's appointments and assuming that carries over. All right, then I'd like us to um, move to uh, the final two charges, um, which in the document we have in front of us, one is called TSO, Town Services and Outreach at the moment, and the other is the old, good old Community Resources Committee, CRC. And uh, Evan, if you'd speak for a moment to the rationale, um, because what you're proposing here is to take a good portion of CRC, and, or some of it at least, and um, turn it into a separate body. Yeah, so, you know, again, I think we started a lot of this discussion from the point of CRC's charge is really expansive and is, is perhaps too big for one committee. Uh, how can we divide this up? And uh, my proposal is to essentially create a new standing committee um, but dissolve an existing one so that we're not adding an, another standing committee on top of our responsibilities. Um, my thought was, again, OCA has essentially two components, outreach and then appointments, and if appointments moves to GOL, um, outreach can stay, and then the question became, well, so what do you pair with outreach? What logically pairs with outreach? And I looked through CRC's charge, and what I came up with was the idea that some of what CRC does has to do with how the community interacts with its government. How do we provide certain services? Um, what are our relationships to the communities? What are our relationships to the institutions? And then other are sort of these long-term planning things, zoning, housing, stuff like that. Um, and that's sort of the line I drew, was if it has to do with the interface between the community and town government. So whether that means the transfer flow of information, whether that means the provision of services, um, 
then that sits in one committee. And everything that exists outside necessarily of government, um, even if it might touch it, some like broader questions about housing, zoning, planning, um, those sit in CRC. And so I pretty dramatically cut down CRC's charge, in part because I removed some components, in part because I removed stuff that I thought was sort of unnecessary. Um, and, and moved a lot of stuff into town services and outreach. So if I can just go through a couple things with regard to this. Um, with regard to town services, and I'm not wedded to the name, I just had to come up with something. No, um, but it, Mandy Jo at the last meeting sort of said that she came down along similar lines, although for different reasons, and hers was sort of day-to-day -day versus long-term, and so I tried to sort of marry those two and say the day-to-day -day provision of services. I don't know if that really accomplishes what she was hoping for, but it was an attempt. Um, and so the idea being what moves over from CRC is basically public ways and anything that has to do with our public facilities, and what moves over from CRC is uh, the relationship between um, the town count, the town of Amherst and our institutions of higher education. What stays from OCA is outreach. Some stuff was added, so for instance, advise and make recommendations to the town council regarding town council participation in community events is one of the outreach things that OCA has done, even if it was never stated, and I thought it was useful to just to recognize that. Um, and then the other thing, the first the first bullet advised the town council on measures that may affect the provision of services to the community by a town department is actually adapted from one of the very first charge proposals that the president put before the council um, at our meeting on December 10th that was never included in any charge. Right. Um, right. But I think captures a lot of the areas where we've been curious about where does this measure lie um, and then advise the town council on matters related to the operation of town government. I added that in there and it's, it's, it's broad and I, I'm not wedded to it, it's just an idea. Um, but that sort of, um, th that was sort of anticipation of in case evaluation of the town manager or the department heads falls into TSO, sort of justifying that op general operations, day-to-day -day operations, anything that might affect that. And, and I wanna make clear because I can already since some of the pushback that we might get in the council would be the town manager deals with departments, the town manager, we don't have a say over that. And, and my, my response to that is, yeah, that's true, but we might be considering measures that would affect that. And so the whole thing, we, none of this is meant to exceed our authority, but if the town council has a measure before it, um, like potentially a wage theft resolution that might impact procurement or something like that, that doesn't logically go to any committee right now, but that would go to this one because it would affect sort of the operations in the, in, of, of government. Okay. Mandy, thoughts? Okay, Mandy has no thoughts. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you can see them up here, although I, now that I, I was doing this late at night last night, now that I look at it, my added review and make recommendations on matters referred is pretty much covered with the advise. It's just, I don't know whether we want, is rev, advise comprehensive enough in some sense, or is review and make recommendations a little bit better of wording, but essentially that bullet point was, I wasn't sure whether advise was comprehensive enough, so I added in the review. Um, mm -hmm. I would, in staff support, put town manager or designee with an and in there. Um, CRC right now has, its charge has town manager or designee. The designee is the assistant town manager, Dave Zomek, and he is quite helpful um, in terms of being able to talk with staff that we might want to have appear before CRC um, because there's a lot of questions that need answered to get those answers to do all of that. Um, if this town, if this new committee is dealing with similar items or half of what CRC is, it would be very helpful for the town manager to be able to designate someone to sort of be in that role. So I wouldn't want us to restrict ourselves to not having that designation liaison. Um, I, you'll see on the second page, oh, I, the third bullet point I added, including transportation. Um, you know, it's, it's up there now that in blue, the uh, after public ways to, to public ways and transportation can be considered a slightly different thing. Public ways is sort of parking, you know, I, I see public ways as the actual 
use potentially of the public way? Are you going to park there? Are you going to have a fee there? Are you going to have it wide or not? Whereas transportation's maybe a little broader to deal with things like if a proposal that came to town meeting and was at our very beginning of this tenure brought to us many times the addition of money for adding and keeping multiple routes for the PVTA. Um, where would it go? Where would it go? Um, this would make clear that that's part of this town services thing because it's transportation. It's not really the use of a public way, but it is transportation dealing with. Um, so, uh, and then the other was the policy recommendations, but if we're getting rid of that, then, you know, I, th those were my recommendations on this TSO. I thought you did a pretty good job at splitting it the way I had in my mind, the split. Lynn. Well, um, just so I understand better, sure. when back, way back <laughs> when I was having various conversations with people about CRC, there was this question about town services being things like safe, public safety and health, and whether that was really a CRC thing or should that be elsewhere. So I'm looking at this it's raising the question for me. Um, when we say the provision of town services, does that include things like public safety, health, um, whatever else? And, and giving some examples, the question of does this include the possibility at some point of evaluating one or more of those services, which the charter, I believe, does speak to? And also, um, I do feel like somewhere in here, the town manager needs to be included, like Mandy Joe mentioned, because he oversees all these services. Um, so I think, I, because this, this jumps up for me as really new for the council, I think it's gonna need some examples uh, to help people understand what's meant by your points. And then my other question is, so does this mean that all public way requests that are long-term would go to this group? I would think the answer yes. is yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. And therefore, does this mean parking yes. and things like Lincoln Ave would go to this group? I think that the general, if I understand this, is the general driving principle is that this is a committee that would deal with... Um, where the rubber meets the road. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, when you've got a parking issue in your neighborhood, when you've got, uh, you know, uh, something concrete, specific, anything like that, um, whereas the, the suggested second committee, which would be still CRC by title, would be more long range, um, master plan, zoning, sort of big, bigger picture, more outward looking, there's obviously going to be some overlap, but I think the, the basic attempt to separate out where the rubber meets the road, sort of, con I think of constituent services as a term that keeps coming to my mind, basically where, you know, the services the town provides for our constituents. So when a constituent comes to me with a, with a specific issue, um, this would be where I would think naturally it would go. Um, but larger issues, zoning, planning, housing, affordable housing, homelessness, those kinds of broader big, big issues would be kept in CRC, is my understanding of this, this distinction. Steve. And I assume that those that have been working on this know that this, if approved, puts us very close to what Northampton has. So the Northampton City Council has four committees, finance, city services, legislative matters, and community resources. So to me, the only outlier is really the um, nah, appointments. So they don't, I don't know if they, how they do appointments there, but I agree with what you were just saying that to me, city services is, yeah, it's like the committee on oversight of the executive <laughs> branch, basically. And then the uh, community resources is, to me, is much more of sort of a long term. Like, what, what are the policies that we can set in place to create a more you know, to help us achieve the goals of the master plan. And I think economic development would fall into that as well. Um, Evan. Yeah, I mean, I think, and I think, you know, to me, this is a little bit cleaner than 
other proposals, but there are still, there's some ambiguity. So when I'm thinking about parking, and I'm thinking about specifically the parking report, and, and I gave this example last meeting, is so um, a parking coordinator, which was one of the proposals, right. that doesn't make sense to go to CRC, right? Because that's really about how does our town, how do our town departments manage parking? So that would go here. To me, the parking benefit district actually is a finance committee thing. That doesn't belong in CRC either, because that's how do we fund our parking services. Um, the provision of public parking is a city service, right? And so the Lincoln Avenue thing would come here. However, if someone, let's say private, in theory, let's say a private developer wants to rezone a parcel to build a parking garage, to me, that's a long-term thing that ties with economic development. It, it, the city's not building the parking garage, the city's not managing it, that would actually be a parking thing that would be in CRC because it's about are we going to rezone something to allow private development to, to provide parking so the city's not providing. And so it does get a little weird because parking falls in here, but there are occasions when maybe it, it wouldn't. Um, but I think that's the thing is if the city is providing it in some way, then it falls within here. If it's something in the community that's tied to economic development, something like that, it would go elsewhere. That, I was just going to expand on that rezoning. It would be in CRC and not this town services committee because that rezoning wouldn't just allow a parking garage, it would allow more than a parking garage. So you're rezoning a plot of land and that has, you know, even if it's a, at a request for a specific project, that doesn't mean that's the only thing that can go on it when you rezone it. it. A lot of stuff can go on it. So it doesn't, you know, while the specific request is to maybe build a specific project, that look needs to be much wider than that project. It needs to be, what does that rezoning allow to go on that land and is that wise? Because it might not be that project. It could be anything else that the zoning change does. So, right. yeah. Okay. I, one of the things that I think will be helpful with all of this is almost a, a chart that then says, here's where zoning will go. Here's where police will go. Here's where whatever mm -hmm. will go. Yeah. Before, so let me go to your outreach and community relations. It is my understanding that next year there is a plan to redo the town website. And so here is an example of how the council may have, through a committee, some interaction around huh. a website. Mm -hmm. You know, suppose at some point we decide we're going to do a bi-monthly newsletter. I'm, I'm not proposing it, okay? I'm just saying suppose that would be a part of this kind of conversation. Just anything that will help people Make it concrete. And, yes. And I agree. I agree. Yes. And that would be included in the packet. And um, I could work with my colleagues on that um, to produce specific examples, yeah. um, a chart, whatever format. But you're, I agree with you that that would be very helpful. Um, do we want to? Well, yeah, we also have a time factor here. But um, yeah, let's take a look at CRC. Um, uh, again, Mandy, I'm assuming you probably have a set of comments, which is, no, this is really valuable, that you would share. Um, with uh, Evan, but obviously you can also share them with us, which is, yeah. so let's look at CRC. I, I actually, I don't know, my comment was keep town manager or designee in the staff support that's already there uh, because it's been very, yeah, it got lost to clerk of the council. Um, I think that's my only comment for CRC. I went back and I compared the charges and well, you hadn't deleted the author policy recommendations, so I was good with it. <laughs> um, you know? good, so and and you did through. delete, I, I do want to mention that one of the things that got deleted was the collaborate and or coordinate with town departments through the town manager or town committees as appropriate, and I was totally okay with deleting that because that seems obvious to me that I don't think committees need to be told they can do that. One thing that, that I wonder about is the, the, um, the relationship between the council and the colleges and the university. And um, that seems to be an extremely important um, area. 
um, over which perhaps in the end we have very little <laughs> influence. But um, right now that would fall in the other bodies purview, town right, town services, which, I mean, I, I guess I think of that committee as town and constituent services, essentially, um, you know, responding to, and so you could argue that outreach in a sense is part of what you would expect to be a constituent service that you, you know, right. Um, we could still keep it, I mean, obviously it's an important part of the charge, the art, outreach component. I don't know if it needs to be in the title, though we could leave it. Um, if you just had uh, town and constituent services, uh, the emphasis is on services, um, both of those that the town provides and those that, that involve our, our constituents. But um, with the, um, people are happy with that in that body. Um, so anything involving our relationship, so UTAC, um, uh, you know, if the town manager eventually does tell us something about his conversation with the uh, universities and with the university and the colleges, if we needed it to refer, would we refer to that committee if, if that's where it goes? Not to uh, CRC. Okay. So, yeah. so I think so. Um, if you think of the relationship between the two, in some sense, is a town service or or constituent service. The UMass is kind. Of, you know, all the residents there are constituents of us. Right. Um, so and and that to me that relationship is much more of a can. I mean, it kind of can fall in both because right. it can right. be a long term thing, but it can be a short term. But UTAC. And you know, think about what are some of our relationships right now. One of them is the coordination between UMPD and APD, and all about mm -hmm. you know parties and stuff and party registration and all. That's really a town service part more than a long-term right. land use zoning housing right. thing. Master so plan. to me, it actually falls more logically in this new town services committee than in CRC. And, and just as you pointed out with something else, um, if there was a zone rezoning issue, which there could be, um, if you think about, for example, all of the land that Hampshire College owns, right. and at some point they, there might be a rezoning issue, then that would come to CRC because it's a very different kind of piece. But I, I do agree that the rest of the relationship really belongs under the, the to-be-named newly committed, new committee. I think the, I'm sorry, Steve? Yeah, but it could also be finance. You know, if, if there's a discussion, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, no, so I, it really I, depends, it's too, I mean, I think everything is nuanced. Yeah. And I think this, what we're trying to do, our goal, one of our goals is to give as much clarity as we could possibly give, and that's why I think Lynn's suggesting the examples, and, and you, Mandy has some in mind from her committee, Evan has some in mind, I, and Lynn has suggested some, um, you know, it's, you're right, Steve, that they're going to be, the council will decide finally where it goes. Um, and then there are going to be cases where it could go and may go to more than one place, but it's going to be a little bit of debate. But hopefully it'll be clear. People have a clear sense of, okay, this is where it should normally go. Okay, this is where it should go. And in those cases where it could go in multiple places, we'll have a conversation. And there may be a few cases where we just have to hash it out. But it's to, it's to streamline a little bit so there would be a, a fairly clear for most situations where these things would go. That's our goal. And the discussion, hopefully, if it's a positive one and we don't get bogged down <laughs> in these, the minutia, which, which could happen, um, people begin to get a sense of, okay, this, this makes things a little bit clearer. Not perfect, that's impossible, but clearer. Evan? Yeah, so, I mean, I agree with, with everything that was said, and I think that it, there's going to still be times the council has to discuss. To, to me, that bullet has to do with anything that has to do with the town government and sort of the UMass administration. But if there was a conversation about what's the impact of undergraduate students on neighborhoods or something, that would fall in CRC, right? Um, there, there are three things that I did to this that I, I wanna make sure I get specific feedback on. Um, so one is I added a bullet, which was community sustainability initiatives. Yeah. Um, and the reason for that has to do with another thing I did, which was I deleted B and C from the original charge. B is what Mandy Joe said about collaborating with town departments. Um, to me, that every committee can do that through the town manager. Um, and then the C was, upon request by the town council, the CRC may study and consider other issues affecting community resources, sustainability, and economic development. I deleted that because it seemed 
also just obvious. Like, yeah, the, any committee can study an issue on within the purview of its charge. The reason I added that bullet was from a quick read, that was the only place sustainability was mentioned in yeah, the charge. Yeah. And so by deleting that bullet, sustainability gets pulled. Um, and so I added that bullet to keep sustainability within the purview, even as removing that part C that to me is, to me B, C, and D are just obvious statements that don't necessarily need to be um, in a charge. But I specified community sustainability initiatives because the idea being that if it's something, you know, the town adopting a new revised fuel efficient vehicle purchasing policy right. that might fit more in town services that's it that's a town one um so i guess i that's something i changed and deleting those bolts was something i changed the other thing i put in a question here is the master plan in accordance with charter charter section 9.8 um section 7 and 8 of the master plan one is specifically i don't remember which number it is but one is specifically titled town services and it's all about facilities and stuff like that um i don't remember what the other one is off the top of my head i, I didn't know if we actually wanted to carve those out because they belong elsewhere or if it's just sort of like we don't need to get into that level of detail mandy i would not um the master plan is meant to be a 20 to 40 year document not a two-year document. So even though it might address town services, it's addressing it over potentially 20 years. Yeah. Our charter requires a review, a rewrite every 20, a full rewrite, I think, every 20 years. Um, I think MGL says 20 to 40 or something. Um, but the charter specifically mentions 20 in section 9.8. And so I think it's easier to keep the whole thing together as the long range vision of the town. And so what is the long range vision of town services? Not how is it gonna be implemented tomorrow? Um. And, and just to add to the conversation, so section eight is town services and facilities. Section seven is open space and recreation. So that's all of our trails and stuff like that. All, all of which is a service, so it's not a TSA. Okay, I wanna move us along if that's all right. Um, and bring this discussion to a close, but some clear sense of what our next steps are. But before I do that, just a very small point. Uh, are we happy with TSO? I think the titles otherwise, GOAL, CRC, um, uh, finance obviously. TSO, um, I suggest constituent services, is, and town and constituent services, taking the outreach out. Um, do we, we don't need to, I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. Do you want to leave it at TSO? Do you, any thoughts one way or the other? I mean, it's either CSO or TSO, constituent services and outreach or town services and outreach. You'd like to keep outreach. I think the T over the C is just yeah, the, a little more clear. Sure. The, the watershed scientist in me, CSO, is also an acronym for combined sewer overflow, so. <laughs> that seems a very appropriate title for <laughs> much of what we do. <laughs> I mean, it's awkward, but I think TSO is fine. So now? was OCA at one point, and yeah, we got used to it. I'm, so <laughs> I am heartbroken that OCA is dying, but I'm overcoming that grief. Um, any thoughts, Steve? Just leave it TSO, town services, and outreach. Okay. Um, next steps. I'm sorry. No? Next steps. Um, obviously, we are, I'm asking um, Evan and Mandy to uh, coordinate and produce a kind of uh, penultimate draft of these five, um, uh, these charges that we would put in a packet for the meeting on January 6th. I would produce a uh, memo or, or a report which would address the rationale. Um, and I think a third item would be um, some examples which could either go, I think it would be a separate document and we still, I still have to ponder this. Um, but I agree with, with Lynn and with the rest of you that, that some specific examples would help at least focus the discussion and maybe, maybe not um, stave off some, some sort of knee-jerk reactions when people say, oh, okay, uh, or they could throw out something and we'd have to say, okay, where does that go? So those are three things I have in mind. Um, with the goal of January 6th, um, with the President's uh, approval, it would be on the agenda for a discussion. Um, it's coming up whether we want it or not, yeah, yeah. Uh, since the um, group, the, since the council has asked that we discuss the president, the vice president, and the committees. So this is um, part of what has been asked for that discussion. So that, okay. Um, and can I suggest 
there's actually two screens that I would put each of these committees through. One is if you go to the town web page, it allows you to pick any number of things like zoning, okay, and you push in a button. I'd find, a, I'd find a home for each of those places. The other thing, and this may not be doable between now and the 6th, and that is we've often wondered, does every committee in town know where its kind of link is to the council? And so at some point, going through the list of all of the committees mm -hmm. and saying which committees belong, which committees would find their home with which mm -hmm. standing committee of the council. Good. That's a big assignment. And sometimes they would be finance, and sometimes they would be something no. else. So it's not clean. So the town web page and the, uh, the town committee list, standing committees, um, connecting them to this proposed change would be very helpful. But that addition, goes to right. something that I believe, Mandy Jo, you brought up almost a year ago now, and that was at some point, do we review committees? Just let me say, make sure you understand what you're taking on when you decide <laughs> to do that one. Yeah, okay. Evan? So if the committee wants, so my next week is very open. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I know other people have like families they're trying to probably maybe spend a holiday with, um, but I've, I've told mine not to expect that. Evan, you so, can stay. You um, can come <laughs> visit my family. So, come on. No. Um, so I, I, if, if the 27th is, I, we're, we're in an awkward position of leaving everything by January 6th, yeah. but there's no meetings of any other committee during that time. We're not meeting again. Um, so I'm trying to figure out a process. I could, I could get all of these materials. Mandy Joe's thing, I think I can do what Lynn's suggesting, although I don't want to 100% commit to it till I start doing it, because it might be something that's much harder to do once you start. Um, all of that by the 27th, and I could send it to George, mm -hmm. but then the question is, does it go out to other committees first? Does it go out with the I'm, I, I'm Timeline is. Right, right. I don't imagine that all of the other committees are meeting before the 6th. I guess OCA would be meeting, huh? OCA meets uh, Friday. Okay. And, I would think and finance is not meeting until the 7th. That is correct, right. CRC is not meeting until the 8th. Right. So I, I wouldn't send it out to the other committees now, but if something's drafted, I think if we assign one person to do it, they can seek comments from others as long as they're the ones that have final sort of say in what it's sense. produced. So if Evan takes on some drafting, if he wants advice from one of us or all, he can seek that mm -hmm. before it heads out to the council in a packet. Mm -hmm. And just like you as chair can seek advice on your report. Right. Again, before it heads it out. To one, to one individual, at least on this body. On this right. body, I right. think, right. yeah. Fair enough. So I also don't think we're going to get consensus on these on the sixth. No, no. Um, I no. think the only, and, and I'm. Let me just I, let me leave it at that. Okay. Um, I can seek help with the report and uh, the memo. Um, Evan and Mandy, do you want to work together to? Uh, or to that and so, we need so to. So I will. So I Evan. will. Let, let's do this. I will take on the revision task and compiling some of the requested documents, I, with the goal of getting it out by the twenty seventh. And if I feel as though I, I need assistance, I will okay. reach out to whoever appropriate, okay. keeping it under quorum of any body. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Um, Mandy. Sorry, one technical, if we're putting this in front of discussion for the council on the 6th, I always go back to do we want some sort of motion today or sense so that you and your report can say, not that we've approved all of these, but that this committee is in unanimity or in support of this rewrite at this time. I, I don't know what it would look like, but do you want to be able to say something 
that says there's a sense of this committee about this because there was a formal vote? Usually when we vote formally, we're voting on something concrete in front of us. This is still a work in progress. Um, I'm sh I can certainly state in public that there, th th with confidence that there is a, this is a consensus document, but it's still not ready for, um, I don't know. You know it's, I mean, w if we vote, what are we voting on? We're just saying, you know, we, we, <laughs> we support the general process that we're still trying to uh, create. I mean, it's, I think we're just not at that stage yet. I mean, I think we could frame it in the same way that OCA did with their process of we're looking for, here's a preview. We haven't decided on anything. Things could still change. We're going to edit. Here's a preview of where we are at this moment, and we're looking for your feedback, feedback. to incorporate right. in the next meeting. Right, right. So this clearly is not going to be something, as Lynn said, we're not going to vote on it at, on January 6th. We are presenting it and for discussion and feedback, and then it comes back to us one more time. Um, and then at that point, hopefully, we could we would have something we could actually vote on and say this is what we recommend. I think that's where we're at. All right. Um, one last quick item, and then we need to get out of here. Um, Lynn has asked me to do this. We have touched on it in your packet, and we're not going to really look at it now. But um, in your packet is my latest attempt to describe a public ways process. Um, obviously, I have one particular <laughs> request in mind, but it, it clearly, it, I think, is something we'd like to. Um, and it, if you get a chance to look at it, what you'll see is that we have four different um, sources of, of, uh, of uh, rules and regulations that, that intersect here. Um, we have the charter. We have the rules of procedure. We have actual town uh, official policies we've created for public ways, and we have MGL. And uh, I'm going to continue. Uh, in the document, you'll see that I have uh, reached out to uh, town manager Bachelman. I reached out to Angela Mills, and I've reached out to Lynn. And I'm going to continue to keep them in the loop because this, I think, all intersects. Um, but at the moment, my plan is to uh, to take this. I want to go back to to Angela Mills and get clarity on MGL to the degree that we can. My personal feeling is MGL does not include parking. And I just need an answer to that. So there, in that document, when you get a chance to look at it, and I'll send a copy, of course, to the president. Um, I just have some questions that I hope will get answered this week. And then I would con craft uh, something for us to consider, hopefully, at our next meeting. Um, but what I have at the moment is the latest version of it. Um, and it's a work in progress, and uh, it's been looked at, and I've gotten great suggestions from all those three individuals, but um, obviously it's, it's uh, um, that's where we're at. Okay? So I guess what I'm telling you is I'm gonna continue to, to refine this and get more input, and hopefully on January 6th, it'll be a finished. Um, you'll have something a little bit more polished. Um, and again, if you have individual thoughts on this, you can send them to me, just by email, just to me. I know, uh, any thoughts, concerns, reactions, suggestions. Maybe you understand MGL better than I do, but um, uh, I read the, the, I only read the brief lines and I didn't see parking there. So I, the reason is that I don't see why we have to have the full, you know, uh, requirements that a, a, a public uh, hearing has uh, in terms of uh, MGL requirements. But the answer may be, we do, or it may be that we don't, but we, we're going to do it anyway. Having said all that, um, I have uh, any uh, discussion, future agenda items. I've mentioned Rule 8.6. That will be on the agenda. Um, obviously, the, the revised version of this uh, will be on the agenda, uh, this meaning what we've just spent the last hour and a half uh, talking about. And I will have also probably something on uh, public ways requests. Anything else people would like? added to the agenda. I am looking forward to a referral of the um, future considerations uh, from the bylaw review committee and just to sort of put that out there and to uh, reach out to our president that, and when that comes that's going to be an interesting addition to our uh, plate. Okay. Um, there is no public presence so we do not have public comment today and uh, I'm going to declare this meeting adjourned at 12 
Thank, Thank you. you all very much.